You can listen to The Professional Left on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for February 9th, 2018. It's not safe for work. Coming to you live from the set of Talking Crooked. That's our new show on Crackle, where we talk about what just happened on HBO's new Crooked Media podcast show. It's The Professional Left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. Good Lord. Yeah. They've hit yeah. the big time, haven't they? Yeah, well, you know, you HBO. Know, there's the HBO. There's the big time, and then there's us. We are the... Um, what did we say? Artisanal podcast for lefties? Yes. Yeah. Okay. yeah we're, the, we're the hand curated heritage podcast. We're also the place where everyone knows your name. So yeah. I was yeah. looking over our podcast correspondence and realizing there's so many people there who uh, I feel a personal connection to. So, oh, yeah. You know, and I hope you guys feel a personal connection to us. And that's that's the advantage of being, you know, small and artisanal and yeah. vintage and... <laughs> All yeah. kinds of things. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not feeling any jealousy toward Crooked Media because I've we've been doing this since 2010. Right, and we'll long be doing time. it for as long as we can. Well, I think we've been having this conversation yeah. even longer. Yeah, right. You, and I, right. you and I, you and I, actually, ten years face to face, and and before that, on on skype chat rooms and blog and so forth we knew each other for about three years online sort of yeah. as friends well and blue gal used to blue gal used to I run did. salons back when salons monday were nights. you know the, yeah, the thing monday nights yeah. Yeah. uh on skype we did a chat room so that was fun and uh you know some things come and go but uh i like talking to you drift glass and i we met face to face I believe, and this is terrible that I, don't, I, I, you know, I don't have it carved in my diary in the front of my diary the exact uh-huh. day, but it was Valentine's Day weekend, the fifteenth or sixteenth. Yes, it, it was the sixteenth of February. We met uh-huh. at a Shakespeare sister meetup at an Irish yes, bar in Evanston, in Evanston Illinois. Illinois, and I came up from Birmingham, Alabama, to meet with Melissa, Shakespeare sister, and uh, she arranged to invite many other people to come. Uh, people from uh, her blog who were fans of her blog from the Chicagoland area, uh-huh. including uh, somebody named Drift Glass. And you walked in and you were tall and ha- wearing a beautiful coat and looking looking nice. You look nice. Well, thank- I clean up good. And I do clean up uh, good. you sat next to me and you didn't I stop did. sitting next to me for the whole night. No, I'm still <laughs> sitting next to you. You're still sitting next to me 10 years yeah. later. So, yeah. yeah, I think there was an interest there. I'm just saying. Although I was, you know, I was going through a divorce. It was a hard time for me. We had a meeting of the minds before we ever met. We so. did. We really did. And it's a, it's a uh, good, uh, we, I highly recommend that for you yeah. people out there. Looking for uh, somebody. It's, yeah. It's not a reproducible experiment very easily. <laughs> no, it's you know? hard to do. But and, we sh- and so we're not jealous that they're on TV because you know why, Blue Gal, you know why? Because you don't show up on TV cameras? No, because it's not TV. It's HBO. It's HBO. <laughs> <laughs> So, yes, right. we will be having uh, our own show, uh, again, on Crackle, uh, <laughs> in which we will talk about their show. Yeah. Uh, right. This is the one show that Chris Hardwick will not be you doing. will not get to do Talking um, Crooked. Yes, we'll, we'll, have, do, we'll, we'll have do the Talking Many guests, uh, comedians, uh, artists, people who do the special effects for the uh, Crooked Media show will be on to talk about the blood packs <laughs> and how they do the faces Behind and make the them scenes. all... the scenes. How they... <laughs> How they make them look all look so white and the same age and male. It's it's a <laughs> it's it's amazing the, the the amount of camera work that they do. Um, uh, and and along with that, we'd like to welcome a wonderful new sponsor that our friend Batocchio steered in our direction. Okay. Uh, it's imagine if you will socks. Uh, <laughs> imagine if you will socks started it was started by a couple of college kids who noticed one day that socks suck. They're hard to put on. They cost too much. And if you don't wash them for weeks on end, they begin to reek and move around on their own. Then they saw a picture of Rod Serling wearing socks and said, hey, we're rich. Let's buy a sock factory. And they did. <laughs> now they're billionaires. <laughs> Thank you, Matocchio. What a good idea. Yes. Rod Serling wearing socks inspired these rich white boys to start a sock, to own a sock factory, right? <laughs> Imagine if you will socks. Imagine if you will socks. 
Uh, you know, you should really wear those instead of Crocs. I think there's too much oh, rhyming going. Oh, there you go. On. There you go. Now, Imagine uh, the, if you will socks. Okay. The irony of this. The irony of this entire thing. This uh -huh. there's a there's a meta media narrative embedded deeply in here. A science fiction narrative too. That it's Rod Serling. Wow. That Rod Serling was furious with advertisers mm -hmm. for interrupting the, the narrative flow of his dramas. Because right. he was doing, you know, he was doing early live television, uh, straight drama stuff that was that were winning all kinds of awards. And then he went on to do The Twilight Zone. He was furious that in the middle of some dramatic scene, you'd have two bunnies selling toilet paper. Right. Because it wrecked everything. Well, now you just you don't even notice it. And he got in a lot of trouble for violating his sort of professional... Um, ethics, his 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 very high standards of of separating his dramatic self from his commercial self by going on and doing commercials. Oh my for, goodness! For beer and for socks and for other stuff. Well, and this and, was before you could just go over to Japan or yeah. East Ger East Germany at the time, you know, and make commercials over in some foreign country where your audience in the United States wouldn't know you were making commercials, yeah. right? This is before. Um, Bob Seger sold the he sold his songs to, to sell trucks and right, so on. Right, right, uh, right. But now it's so deeply. I mean, name me a podcast mm -hmm. out there anywhere that isn't directly and routinely interrupted by sponsored messages. Ours. Uh, ours. Well, there's the one. <laughs> our, the art, our artisanal heritage, old school Rod Serling style podcast. See. <laughs> but it's, it's. I mean, and and honestly, because you know we we do ours by donation, by voluntary donation. Yes, and, we do. And, uh, we do, but yes. there is there is no other model for sort of keeping your body and soul together other than taking ads or having us uh, having a, a uh, yeah a busking patron. what we call busking you yeah. know begging for five dollar contributions is how we stay afloat yeah and, and so this is you know you're either you either have a patron mm -hmm. um uh you know you have a pope mm -hmm. who will pay you a shitload of money to to paint the Sistine Chapel and then you go right. up and do whatever you want to. Mm -hmm. Or you do it some other way, but that's mm -hmm. that's the world we live in. Um, also, well, we want to thank uh, where the good Lord split you, emergency party planners, for underwriting the entire cost of talking crooked on Crackle. Our new show, yeah, our new show. It's, uh, they're doing they're doing really good business. They uh, are. Where they the good are. Lord split you, emergency party planning, uh, party planners is just blowing up all over Washington. Uh, there's so many people being fired. <laughs> And being walked even, out the door. Even wife beaters being fired. Indeed. That's how I, that's bad it's gotten over the Trump White House. They actually had to let a wife beater go. And we hear rumors mm -hmm. uh, through the medium we call the news that there are literally dozens and dozens of other people in the White House who are also on – who also have no permanent security clearance. Yes, right. Because the FBI – and we don't know why – I assume because they're of the same uh, caliber of character as Donald Trump's other wife-beating, crooked Nazi friends. Yeah. Uh, the FBI said, oh, fuck no, we're not giving these people the uh, keys to the kingdom. Are you out of your mind? Because they still get to do that. And then Trump says, well, then I'm giving them a temporary pass because fuck you. Seriously. Um, you know, again, uh, <laughs> um, Jeff Gannon uh, was not a – was not a – was just ahead of the curve. That's his problem. He was just ahead <gasps> of the curve. Um, male prostitute uh, journalist invited into the Bush White House. Yep. Um, wouldn't have caused. Would nobody would bat an eye in this environment. Nope. And in fact, nobody batted an eye during the Bush administration. Which well, leads I, us. I, I want to just add one thing about that. I know we're going to start this week with news roundup because yep. we think that might be a better way to do things. As I've looked back on our shows, it seems easier for us to do it that way. Yeah. But um, I noticed two things. One is that um, in the news this week. Donald Trump doesn't actually read his, you know, classified presidential briefing. Oh, and he relies on other people to tell him what's in it. And the other thing is that apparently Donald Trump asked General Mattis for a plan on Iran, like going to war with Iran. Sure. And Mattis mm -hmm. just ignored it. Yeah. Because on to the next thing, and Trump isn't going to remember, and it nothing matters. And so I'm just not going to do anything about that. And it's only because this stupid parade thing came out because Trump really wanted it enough to say so out loud in front of reporters that that's even a thing. So, you know, um, Military Times, which is a in-house publication for people in the military. Oh, really? Yeah, Military I thought Times. That was, I thought that was the porn magazine that Jeff no. Gannon advertised in back in no. the day. But well, it might I was, be. But I was wrong. I guess I stand corrected. I don't know, but Military Times is an actual thing. 
They polled their readers, and uh, 89% said no military parade for Donald Trump. So, you know, that's not controversial when 89% say no. Uh, hold on a minute. I just need to... I need to take out an earring because it's dangling and making noise. There we go. All right. You know what you need? Those $6 earring... Um, <laughs> earring removers. Levers. <laughs> oh, that oh yeah, buy. that are $19.99 for four earring backings. Yes. Okay. You know what? I, I'm sensing a future sponsor of the uh -huh. festival. You just go with that. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, so the fact that there's, like, controversy, and again, that's that. there's that word that doesn't mean what they say it means. Controversial... It's supposed to mean that people disagree about something. It's something that is just offensive across the board to all normal thinking people isn't controversial. Right. So you don't you know, know what that word means. The word the the uh, cartoon engine, and I say yeah. that in the way that I intend it. Uh, yeah. Mascot of the Cleveland Indians uh, isn't controversial. It's racist. That's the word you're looking for, yeah, is the racist. Word, the word you're looking for, in most cases, is racist, racist misogynist, homophobic, right. what have you. Right. Bigoted, right. generally bigoted. bigoted. And not controversial. So, uh, but but this, this issue of classification within the Oval Office, it just seems like it's utterly meaningless. Oh, the, yeah. The, I can't imagine that anyone working for the CIA is giving Trump anything that's actually sensitive. Well, you remember when but, they ignored the order about transgender troops. Right, right. Yeah, we'll, we'll study that. We'll check into it. No, really do it. No, we'll we'll, we'll check it out. We'll let yeah, you know. we got to study just, that. Three yeah. years later, we're not, you know, he'll, he'll, have, well, he'll be on to the next thing. Cause he's... And I got to say, all of Trump's um, psycho, you know, bullshit moves mm -hmm. exactly parallel the email I get from my oh, own yeah. Yeah. Crazy Uncle Liberty. Well, because he's watching uh, Fox and Friends too. So these are people who are completely freaked out by tra a lot of transgender. You know, uh, I I I serve my country. I didn't cut my dick off and expect the, the U.S. to pay for it. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. You know, that's the level of humor at which these people monkey brains operate. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And so they're completely freaked out by transgender anything, which is awesome. <laughs> because because these, uh, the first shock troops of the resistance should definitely be drag queens and people who are transgender. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. it will scare the shit out of them because they don't know what to do. You know, it just and, – and that will lead us into our, our, our uh, news roundup. But it's this whining, um, you know, petulant white grievance. You, know, well, who, you didn't give me any choice because mm -hmm. Hillary. Mm -hmm. and, and now everything is about Obama did this and Obama did that and Hillary. And, and, and you're calling Trump a traitor. What about uranium one? They yeah. really yeah, are. Yeah, they really believe this, that. Yes, you're a year yes. to your dream presidency, man. You're a year into having the biggest, loudest, dumbest, racist, con man asshole of your dreams and control over both houses of Congress. And and what are you doing? You're sitting in front of your computer complaining about Hillary and Obama because yeah. that's literally all you know how to do. You know, I, as a thought experiment, all I, all I ask people to do is, is think, what would the country be like? With 40 million fewer Republicans. <laughs> hey, let's talk about Nazis in our home state now. Let's talk about Nazis, shall we? We do a news roundup. And there were so many things going on in Illinois this week that made the national news in terms of Illinois politics. And part of that is we have a governor running. We don't have any senators running for re-election, but we have a governor running. And we have lots of house races that are interesting and uh, some really weird Republicans running in this state. And yes, let's, we do. Let's start with... <laughs> Illinois 3 and the congressional race up in Illinois 3. Um, a couple of people tweet me about some of these things, and you have to realize we're in Illinois 13. If you want to look at a district map, that is south central Illinois. Yes. Uh, Illinois 3 is up in Chicagoland area, which is upstate. We're not there. We're we're way down. So we're the middle of middle America, literally the middle, middle of middle of, America. We are, yeah, we're 70 miles from Peoria, right? Yeah. And we're 100 miles from St. Louis. Right. So, uh, okay, so, but there is a Nazi running in the Republican primary. And he's going to win. Because he's running unopposed. He's running unopposed. <laughs> Nazi runs unopposed in, not, not since the glory days of, oh, now I'm going to forget his name. Um, I'll get back to it. Yeah. Has, has it has, have Illinois politics been this kind of hilariously um, fucked up? Yep. And here's the thing. Um, I did a post on this guy. Uh, because Illinois Nazis, you know, this is my Arthur wheelhouse. Arthur Jones is his name, yep. and he's a 70-year-old retired insurance salesman, former member of uh, 
the American Nazi Party, apparently. Yeah. White supremacist, Holocaust denier, you name it. There's a, um, um, but his rhetoric mm-hmm. on television mm-hmm. is, as I pointed out, he's the perfect no labels candidate. <laughs> Other than the whole Nazi thing, he's the perfect no labels <laughs> candidate. He's a disruptor who's sick of the corrupt duopoly. Um, he's only running as a Republican because that was the open slot. But in his heart, he's, he's a truly an independent who believes both sides of our two-party system are equally awful and corrupt. Now, l- here's how he puts that, though. He puts it as our accursed two-party, Jew-party, uh-huh. queer-party <laughs> system. But as, as the chief political analyst for ABC News once told me personally... Um, Matthew Dowd, was, everybody. Matthew Dowd, uh, pointing out that this guy was actually a prominent member and, and leader in the American Nazi Party. But then again, Joe Scarborough was a prominent member of the Republican Party. Mm-hmm. And now Joe Scarborough is an independent. We're supposed to pretend that he's never Republican. And when I pointed out the fact that to, long ago to Matthew Dowd, the ABC News chief political analyst, that, you know, didn't you notice that GOP was doing this shit when, when Jerry Falwell was doing it and Rush Limbaugh and Lee Atwater? His response was, why don't you accept people for where they are in the present? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I, I am obliged now to accept uh, my local Nazi uh, for what he is right now at this exact literal moment in time. What he did 10 minutes ago? You know, that's really being judgmental there, their drift class. You really yeah. shouldn't do that. So and, and so, so he's he's the perfect no labels, yes. middle centrist, unite yes. unite America candidate. Yes. Now I say unite America. I'm talking about a real thing. You're this yes. is something that was on the Michael Smirconish show this week where he highlighted and brought on the executive director. It used to be called the Centrist Project, but now they're going to run candidates mm-hmm. under some massive independent flag. Well, it wasn't um, mouth no, so. No, right. It was, they didn't want to be the, the mushy middle. They want to be independent. And, mm-hmm. and again, the whole thing is get over the corrupt duopoly, get over this two party corrupt system. Crazy. Crazy. And, system. uh, they, but, but here's the deal drift glass. And I am not, I want to be clear about this. I am not making this up. I am reading this from centristproject.org. Okay. Sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're, first of all, they're running candidates who are all former lawyers, former or current businessmen, philanthropers, millionaires, and all white and wealthy. And there's like four or five races where they're running these vanity candidates, rich vanity candidates who want to talk about and, – and literally it's up to country over party. What party are they talking about? Right. Any party. No, not any no. party. No. <laughs> now <laughs> – Drift glass. I'm going to read to you. I'm not yes. making this up. Go from for Centristproject.org. I want you to find the razor in the apple. Okay? okay. Unite America is a rejection of the zero sum politics that pits red against blue. I'd like to stop right there. <laughs> I'd like to put uh, fifty. I'd like to put a dollar down on purple. Okay. And... Just a minute. Just okay. a minute. It gets better. Okay. It gets better for Unite America. Okay. And instead offers. An invitation to join Team Red, White, and Blue. Yeah, very, very white. Very, Wait a minute. Very Wait a minute. White. It's, this is so bad. Our logo boldly introduces, quote, Unity White, unquote, <laughs> back into the color palette of our politics right. as the third force that can bring us together. Make America white again. United, Unity White... And then they give American Red and Patriot Blue and Unity White, and they give you the hex number Mm -hmm. and the CMYK number so that you can go and and put these on your website and have them be accurate. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah, so Unity White is going to be back in the color palette of our politics. If you, first of all, I I think Tidy Whitey is now the new. Uh, should now be the new Pantone designation for Did that. You find the razor bullshit. in the apple there, Drift Glass? Oh, honey, it's all razors. It's all fucking razors. <laughs> all the way down. Secondly, I think, really, uh, if you have your Pepe frog, yeah. that white will make it really pop as it comes <laughs> off the screen. Because then it just it's, it screams, yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. But this is exactly what No Labels was, right? Yes, this yes. is rich white people who don't want to be tarnished right. because they can't go to their their white classy golf club right. and uh, talk about being a 
Trump Republican because that has there's no class. That's this is Jeb Bush Republicans looking yeah. for a place to land. Yes, it is. And and has always been this. It has yep. always been this. Yep. There is really no war in, in terms of their outcomes. It is no, no. look, we built a basically a party out of out of garbage, mm -hmm. out of dog mm -hmm. shit and, mm -hmm. and madness and dynamite and and races and the scum of the earth. We we piled it all into a big heap and, and it generated a lot of heat and that heat put us into office and got us our tax cuts. But we really, really don't want those people coming into our fucking neighborhood. Right. You know? Right. And and they they never realize that unless that they're was... gonna mow our grass or right. change grandma's adult diaper in right. the nursing home. No, That's I mean, what they I, I want. Mean, no, no, no. I, see, I mean, you misunderstand. Uh, they don't want the base of their party. Oh, they don't want the Nazis to come into that, their right. They'll, right. They'll, right. They'll take their vote. Right. They'll take their vote right. all day long. They'll take their and vote they, all day long. Yeah. What yeah. they never realized is that that is that Jeb Bush is the fringe. Yes, exactly. exactly. The, the racist, the the trans haters, the the mm -hmm. scumbags. That's the party. That's the base of the party. That's the fucking that party. is the primary voter. Absolutely. And those Absolutely. people hired David Brooks and Michael Gerson to make them look respectable. Yeah. Now, it was a transactional relationship. You, you know, you, you will make us look respectable and we will give you votes and money. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we could have stopped this back when it was Newt Gingrich and Rush Limbaugh, but we right. didn't. Right. We could have stopped it back when it was Lee Atwater, but we didn't. We liked that. We loved that shit. That was winning the fucking elections. Now, those people run everything. So now we have to pretend that they are not us. They had nothing to do with us. And we have the money to buy respectability by setting up our own stupid little organizations. And there will always be plenty of people. There will always be an infinite supply of Matthew Dowds and David Brooks who for money, let's be very clear about this, for money will sit and, and nod their head and say both sides, both sides, both sides. And for money, someone will put a camera at them and call them an organization. And for money, someone will give them a show on MSNBC. And that's literally all they have. So that's what they're doing. And it's it's obvious. It's been obvious to us on the left for a, a long ass time. Mm -hmm. um, but you know what? Here's what happens. Uh, eventually, you get a Jeannie Ives running for governor in Illinois. Bless her heart. We're back to the news roundup, if you don't mind. No, that's fine. Uh, Jeannie Ives is uh, running for governor. Uh, I'll, I'll let you guess which party, Blue Guy. Mm, guess which party, everybody. <laughs> yeah. The Republican primary in Illinois. Um, uh, she's run an ad. Uh, her ad features the following things. I'll let you guess. Uh, that Bruce Reiner's giving Rom, that's the mayor of the city of Chicago, everything he asked for. And it's an African-American woman with a union T-shirt. Right. Then there's a uh, young Chicago woman. School, bailing out Chicago schools. Bailing yeah. out the failing Chicago schools. Chicago schools. Yes. Then there's a young woman in a with pussy, a pussy hat. hat. Yeah. Giant pussy hat. Uh, I believe talking about abortion, but I'm not yeah. sure. Oh, but... thank you. Thank you, Bruce Reiner, for letting the taxpayer pay for my abortions. My abortion. Abortions, there's... plural. Yeah. Then there's uh, an, uh, an, a kid in an Antifa hoodie and bandana mm -hmm. uh, thanking because sanctuary cities. Yeah, right. Uh, by the way, it's it, we're recording this on Friday afternoon. Yeah, this is all um, anti-Bruce Rauner yeah. as being a traitor to Republican values. There's one more I want to mention, but I yeah. do want to do a little sideline here. Trending on Twitter right now uh -huh. is Andrew Sullivan. Oh, it's and there's Andrew a reason Sullivan. why. Yeah. Andrew Sullivan is writing about the Antifa hoodie bandana intersectionality people on the Absolutely. left. Absolutely. Being just as bad as the people. Where do you think these morons get this idea from? How the fuck does Andrew Sullivan have yep. a job anywhere? Well, Andrew Sullivan sucked a lot of dick. And <laughs> Andrew Sullivan hired a lot of people who sucked his dick. And now they all owe each other. You don't you mean know? that in an in a gay way. You no, mean, I mean that, that in, a professional, in a professional way. I want to be way. clear. Yes. Andrew Sullivan. Drift class uh, drops this in there every once in a while, folks. Yeah. And I, I have I'm gonna translate here because that was not a homophobic statement. No, no, he, he, when he says that, he let means... me be clear. Blowjobs are wonderful and a blessing <laughs> from God. I don't mean that anyone who th thinks that's an insult or insulting, um, you no, really need to get out. He's talking about professionalism yeah. and back. You mean rubbing backs? Is what I, well, mean, I, I, let's put it this way: there's a very large circle jerk of editors and writers who yeah. who, who interchange with each other. David Frum used to be over here. Then he got over there. Then he got fired from over here. Then Andrew Sullivan hired him. Now he's an editor at The Atlantic. Right. And, and, and they're that... all just protecting each other's careers. Yeah. And uh, Andrew Sullivan, you know, actually responded to you once about, you don't have to attack my career. Dude, why are you coming it's, after me personally? Personally about my career. He Andrew, used the word career to you. And, exactly. And I responded, 
how is that any different than you going after? I listed off a bunch of people that he went after in exactly the same way right. I was going after him. Right. And right. he's. And said I want something- to. I want to quote what Jay Bowie says about on Twitter about Andrew Sullivan. Andrew Sullivan could personally witness ICE agents kidnapping and disappearing an immigrant, and still think the real danger is 19-year-olds protesting his friends on the lecture circuit. Yes. And that Andrew is Sullivan, Andrew Sullivan in a nutshell. Yeah. Because Andrew Sullivan is a is a, a white bitter, privilege, folks. A it's bitter white privilege. privileged white yeah. gay Tory Catholic writer who mm-hmm. lives in Washington D.C. He lives lived wherever he wants to live because he can afford York, it. Yes. And lived in New York for ten minutes and hated it. Yep. And now writes and wrote a horrible article about how why New York sucks for New York Magazine because hey, mm-hmm. why? But, <laughs> I got paid but, for he, that. Yeah. And apparently the only place he ever goes are college campuses. Yep. Uh, to vacation on uh, Martha's Vineyard or wherever he goes, you know, once a year for to clear his mind because he's a very troubled person. There's a lot of thoughts going around in his brain, and and Ireland once in a while to visit. The, the, but that's it. That's all he he is still is not really sure we had a civil war in this country. He is not quite sure it happened or if it happened, it happened because of race. He's it's, it's very iffy about that, and and that's fine. You can be that insulated and be that stupid and be that uh, clueless, and that's great. That's you're right. Why? Anyone puts this guy behind a keyboard and said, crank out 800 words on intersectionality and, and why antifas screaming lefties on the campus are bad, and I will pay your fucking rent in Washington, D.C. for the next month. I That's the part I don't get. Now, I know there's a reason for it, and I know it's it has to do with inbreeding among our elites in the bubble. Um, but to date, no one has come out and drawn a map on a wall and said, oh, no, here's here's how it worked. This goes to this, goes to this, goes to this. He owes him a favor. He got him out of prison. He helped him bury a hooker. Here's the coke that they swapped. They both know each other's crimes. It's, it, oh, it's, I see. It's Ray Donovan. <laughs> they all have shit on each other, and they all t- look after each other because if they don't, it all falls apart. Got it. Now, back to Gene Ives. Um, the most uh, offensive one, uh, from my point of view, was the trans person. Yeah. It's ad. The yep. guy in the wig and the, and the low-cut dress. With the furry said, chest. And Thanks the, for yeah. letting me use the girls' bathroom. Which was not even in the bill that Rauner signed. This was not a bathroom bill. No, no. This was not, this had nothing to do with that. This yeah. had to do with birth certificates. The bill that Rauner signed in this regard, your birth certificate in Illinois can reflect the gender that you are now rather than the gender that you were born with. And, and, that, and that none of this has anything to it, do it, with it, There wasn't men. any bathroom. There was no bathroom in it. Right. There was no, nothing the, bathroom. <laughs> the terror, the, 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 yeah. this is just a button they push. Yeah, you know right, what? Right. Liberals want to let grown men put on dresses and come into bathrooms and molest little girls. Right, right. That's what they're saying. That's that, the whole point. It's is... part of the liberal agenda to do that to your kids because – Scared Which is amazing shit. because they've been saying that in one way or another for three decades. Yes. You know, yes. gays and are going to molest your kids. Transgenders are going to molest your kids. Uh, you know, any same-sex marriage, they'll molest the kids. Right. And the then teachers. You get Those to, teachers are going to molest teachers, your kids. You know, have, have them in school. Hire, hire gay people in your school. They're going to molest your kids. Mm-hmm. And then a Republican <laughs> runs – and then, for and then, and then Roy the Moore shows in up. Alabama. Yeah. But, oh, there's an actual yeah, time no lost. And, no and, com- <laughs> and they're completely behind him. Yeah, and when yeah. and when the children that escaped his clutches grow up, they become the women that Republicans punch in the face. Yeah. Yep. Um, this is who they are. And, and that's the point. The whole point of me going down. And of course, the punchline of this ad is her waving around the National Review saying, they were right, the National Review is right. Bruce Rodgers, the worst Republican governor who ever lived on God's earth. You know, because th- it's the National Review. The, you know, the National Review, America's leading white supremacist journal, respectable white supremacist journal, uh, is now a feature in this crazy bitch's ad. Yeah, um, yeah. And here's the point. She knows Republicans. Exactly. You, don't, you yep. really don't need another safari. From another another expedition from the New York Times or Washington Post out into the heartland to see what Republicans really think. Read, look at this woman's ad. That's what they think. <laughs> this is who they are. It's not complicated. I know right. you want it to be complicated, and I know that you want it to be weird and strange and inexplicable and magical, and you find, but it isn't. They hate women. They hate minorities. They hate government. They hate anybody who doesn't look like them. They hate trans people. And they blame that group of people for everything that's wrong in their life. And they will vote for anyone who says, you're right. And they'll hate anyone and drive them from office and and, and scream at them and wave their AK-47s in the air uh, uh, against anyone 
who says they're not. And it's just that simple. And you really don't need to know a lot more. All you need to do is turn on AM conservative talk radio at any point in the last 30 fucking years and listen to it to know what these people think and how they believe and what the trajectory of the party is. That's why it's so hilarious to watch the Joe Scarboroughs and the Rick Wilsons and even the David Frums going, holy shit, the Republican Party's full of Republicans. Who could have known? Right. It, it is such a fucking scam. It is such a, a loud lifeboat building exercise every day on the news. These people's renewed indignity that their Republican Party is full of Republicans. Speaking of Republicans, we're back to the news roundup. And I'd like to point out that if your government shutdown lasts for more than five hours, you should really contact your physician. <laughs> uh, this, I, I'm trying to figure out what Rand Paul was trying to distract us from. I have a theory. Yeah. The theory is that if Rand Paul can just turn the government off and on like flicking a light switch and just make a mockery of government itself, Rand mm-hmm. Paul wins. Because the yeah. whole idea of conservatism is all government is evil and must be destroyed and is, is, is inherently ridiculous and wasteful. And look, I can turn it off and on, off and on. I can fuck with it. I can shut it down. I can defund things. I can refund things. And you, good trailer trash people living in sister fuck Arkansas, your life isn't affected, is it? Your lights didn't go out. No, you're fine. So the government is this big, wasteful shithole full of liberal scams that are stealing your money and giving it to brown people. So we can pretty much safely shut it down, as I have demonstrated. That's my theory. It's to make government look ridiculous so that when they gut it, when they finally roll the tanks, no one will be there to defend it because, well, what did government ever do for me? All right. We're going to continue. FBI. The The FBI was monitoring former Trump campaign advisor Carter Page— at a time when he spoke with Steve Bannon about Russia. Uh, Steve oh, no. Bannon was on the tape. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Um, as we mentioned earlier, dozens of White House employees still don't have permanent security clearance. Jared. Oh, yeah, Jared. <laughs> For reasons that we will probably learn at some point once these criminals are all gone and the FBI leaks it in five years or ten years. But it will turn out that they were all horrible criminal scumbags. Um, who couldn't pass a basic background clearance to be a postal clerk, much less a, a person in the White House. Well, and they're, they're violating federal law by lying on their yeah. uh, security clearance forms anyway. But n- nothing matters because the constitutional safeguards that are set up against this kind of thing happening have failed. Yes. Yes, they have. This is this because, is truly— Because Republicans have yeah. put party before country, well, not— I, not People in general, not both sides, Republicans. This this reminds me. Of, yes, first of all, it's it's a it's a um, it's a Selden crisis, a true Selden crisis, a real genuine. You crisis. You need to tell us say what book that is. Oh, that's uh, that's the Foundation trilogy. Foundation um, trilogy by by uh, Isaac Asimov. By Isaac Abner, um, and and a sound fell. A Selden crisis is is a genuine crisis uh, that that was predicted and a, a moment when the, the culture changes. And Selden and a group of people set up this little colony at the right place at the right time to be there to not save the Galactic Empire from collapse, but to make the Dark Ages much shorter and much less painful. And each at each turn of history, there's a crisis that everyone thinks was unpredictable. And, oh, my God, what are you going to do? But it turns out it was predicted. And the conditions of those people on that planet at that time Mm-hmm. are perfect to meet that crisis and actually grow from it. So we're actually in a real Selden crisis. And it does remind me, this really does remind me of an, another science fiction book, if I may. Um, as long as everybody can take a drink, sure. Sure. Douglas Adams. Yes. The bee arc. Uh-huh, yep. Um, this is the Republican Party of the 60s realizing that, oh my God, uh, people are never going to vote our crazy stuff into, never going to enact, enact our are insane ideas. They're never going to do any of this shit. They're never going to shut down Social Security. They're never going to get rid of Medicare unless, you know, people in the Republican Party aren't stupid enough to do that. Nobody's stupid enough to do that. And they took that as a challenge. How can we make the average Republican stupid enough to do that? And it took it took <laughs> it took 30 years and billions of dollars and a complete uh, media and in, in, uh, immersive media experience. The TV, they had to buy everything. They had to buy radio and TV and they had they had to buy churches and but they succeeded in literally lowering the collective IQ of the average Republican voter, of Republican base voters, to the point where they can they will vote to blow their own brains out and blame liberals when they do it. 
Mm-hmm. They have they have succeeded. They took it as a challenge. Oh, okay. How how best could we lobotomize six forty fifty sixty million people? Whichever it is. Yeah, brainwash yeah. 40, 50, 60 million people to the point where they won't stop brainwashing themselves. Mm-hmm. They will actually act. Turn it on. Them. Turn on Fox News. Yeah. yeah. And, and and not like there's there'll be no wall around them, no gun to their head. Nobody's gonna force them to do it, but make them voluntarily brainwash themselves every day and get dumber and angrier and more bigoted every day. And that's what they did. They created a self-sustaining engine that gets dumber and angrier and more hateful and bigoted every day. Mm-hmm. And that's and that's what they've done. And now that thing is running downhill at 100 miles an hour. <laughs> and uh, But that's really why we're here. Um, we're here because this is where we were always going to be. Um, I'll mention that the stock market continues to act like ash and alien. That's my own little little joke. Um, <laughs> when, when he, he he was the android who flipped out and started thrashing around every which way and spewing right. up who and 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 trying to kill Ripley, the stock market is just having some sort now, of. Now it might be a correction drift class. Yeah. You don't know, but we do know that uh, I believe it was Forbes came out and said that uh, the forty one percent of company of corporations, excuse me. Corporations are going to spend 41% of their tax cut on buybacks yeah. for tax, for their sure. uh, stock market. Well, And they're going to spend 7% on wages and employee improvement. Mm-hmm. And when you go to manufacturers in the United States, it's 47% is going to be spent on stock buybacks. And something like 4%. I don't, I don't know if I have that right, but it was lower. Yeah. Uh, for uh, employee improvement and employee wages, yeah. So this is why this is why Eisenhower had a ninety four percent top tax rate. Yeah. Because these people would be forced to actually reinvest their money in their factories, in their workers, in their communities. They they could not stockpile right. enough and wealth. Right. To they become an aristocracy. The, the way that you avoid a ninety four percent tax rate is by reinvesting. Yep. And you can you can give it away through the government or you can give it away by paying your employees and uh, investing in your uh, the infrastructure of your business. Now, and speaking of large amounts of money, apparently, I don't know if I haven't done the math on this just yet. I haven't taken my shoes and socks off to do all the numbers. <laughs> but apparently the spending increases the Republicans just passed mm-hmm. in their budget. Remember the Republicans control the entire government now. Are larger than the Obama stimulus over which these same Republicans completely lost their shit. Mm-hmm. And now uh, people are starting to talk like liberal bloggers from 10 years ago, Blue Gal. Yeah, yeah. They're starting to sound an awful lot like, I don't know, the professional left podcast saying, you know what? Maybe Republicans don't care about deficits. Maybe, Maybe. they don't. Maybe. We knew this. We knew this when Dick Cheney said so. I know. I know. Well, maybe it's because it was a black guy. Maybe it was. Maybe it's the whole Tea Party was because it was a black guy. Maybe, golly, you know, Blue Gal, that, that someone should really look into that. Uh huh. Um, uh huh. Anyway, uh, would you care to proceed with our news roundup? Uh, Scott Pruitt says climate change isn't necessarily a bad thing. It could it could help people down the road. That's right. And uh, I I want to um, I hate to do this, but I actually want to agree with Donald Trump on one thing. I know this is hard to do. No, I agree with him on two things. So you go ahead. What it, well the the one thing that I agree with him about actually there's there are two things also that I agree with Donald Trump about uh-huh. uh, the messaging on climate change has been to terrify people on, yes. on the left yes and there's no reason we shouldn't be terrified I get it that it's that bad mm-hmm. but when you terrify the general public they tend to freeze and they tend to the tendency is to uh, back up against the wall and uh, be defensive about it and say, well, we can't really do anything and uh, this is about jobs and so forth. And what is really happening in that conversation is deep down inside, even the opponents are ter- are just terrified, but they they are terrified not only of what's going to happen, but terrified of what it might require of them to reverse that. And so I, I know I've said this on the podcast before, Making the conversation about clean air, clean water, clean land, safe food. Right. And your children's future. Your future. Yeah, your children's future. But even there, you're getting into terror right. of threatening your children's future is a terrifying thing. No. Make it about clean air and dare people to argue with you against clean air. And you will. you can fix the climate change issue. You can make people feel that they can do something. When you and I were born, Drift Glass... 
nobody recycled anything in their homes. That's you didn't true. do any recycling at all. No one did. When I was 10, 10 years old, no one did. It took the ecological movement changing people's attitudes about, you know, there being a big garbage pit that you could just throw things in and it would go away. And that was called the ocean. Right. <laughs> and we know that's not true. So if if you argue that clean air, clean water, safe food, clean land, don't, you know, we, we, we changed people's attitude toward littering. We changed people's attitudes. We can do that also with climate change. The problem is there's this huge amount of money invested in fossil fuels. Right. <laughs> Yes, that there is. will not let that conversation happen. Right. Uh, solar and wind is for tomorrow. Right. You know, the, oh, tomorrow we're going to have this great future with wind and solar, mm -hmm. not recognizing how much cheaper it is long term and short term to switch over as soon as possible. Well, tomorrow uh, we have wind and solar. Today we have parades. See? Yay. <laughs> yeah. Parades are uh, apparently President Stupid would like a big military parade down Pennsylvania Avenue with tanks and missiles and uh, who knows what. And it'll it's to honor veterans, apparently, because uh, we don't have any of those holidays it's currently. It's not to honor veterans. No, it's to honor no. Donald Trump. Donald Trump, it's a, yeah. It's a parade for Caesar, mm -hmm. to honor Caesar for us, all the good things Caesar has done for us. And, and again, I Donald Trump is right that his base would love it. Sure they would. Of course they would. It's yeah. a reality show spectacle to show yeah. them that their white man power, you know, their white king is in charge mm -hmm. for them so yes that's he's he's right on target with his base understanding right. what they will appreciate yeah his, his base is a minority the majority yes. of this people majority of people in this country apparently believe that russia in fact meddled with our elections yep. that they'll do it again and that our yep. federal government is not doing nearly enough to stop it yep. that's what most people believe most i didn't say the other thing that i agree with donald trump oh, about that um, I agree with him on uh, international profit sharing and profit dividing up of pharmaceuticals. That it is not if we're, but but that does require a mindset change in the United States. Right. That we are going to negotiate the price of pharmaceuticals in the United States, and yes, it should be based on. Other countries also taking responsibility for the profit margins of companies that sell those pills. Now, then I also feel we need to get into who develops these pills. They're often developed in universities and government-sponsored institutions. And uh, the research that's being done on pharmaceuticals is what color purple should they be and how should we advertise it? Right. You know, and I have a whole process thing of ban pharmaceutical advertising, negotiate with other countries as to the, the how the cost of developing and, and maintaining these pills and medicines and, and surgeries and treatment, you know, treatments, how that cost should be covered fairly by different countries. Yeah. But uh, he, he said something along those lines of other countries don't contribute to the profit margins on these pills, but their patients in those countries have access to those medicines. Right. He didn't say it that elegantly, but he said it. <laughs> and, and Well, he also and said that I'm going to get everyone's going to have awesome health care. It's awesome awesome health care, and cost. it's going to be so be easy. Kind of, yeah, he's, he's a liar. He's a big, fat fucking <laughs> he's liar. He's a big, fat liar. Yeah, it's all Twice a day, yes. the clock, a, a busted clock is right. Oh, yeah. No, I agree with him that the media is broken. I yeah. I, I have the yep. opposite opinion about how it's broken, and I can yeah. I actually have evidence to support my position. And he has just his you know crazy birds in his head tell him crazy things. He has Fox News telling him what to think. But uh, other than that, uh, he's a dead loss. The entire Republican Party, a dead loss. complete dead loss, Republican cultural Party, dead yeah, loss. Definitely. Write them off. Yeah. Don't don't bother wasting your time or breath arguing with these people. You'll only make yourself angry. Um, speaking of that, uh, Rob Porter's a wife beater. Yeah, Rob Porter's a wife beater, and uh, was was hidden in the White House for over a year. Wasn't hidden. Wasn't hidden. It was hidden to, from us. Yes. Oh, that's oh, absolutely. But that's but, what I uh, mean. Yeah. No. Yeah. They they uh the uh, Don McGahn apparently the White House uh, lawyer. You know, the mob lawyer that uh, Donald Trump uh, has in the White House there knew about it uh, 12, 13 months ago mm -hmm. or knew something was up. The FBI flagged it. Uh, there were all these warning signs apparently over the last year. Um, again, multiply this by dozens because that's the number of people who were in the same position Porter was, which was the FBI says, holy shit, no way we're giving this person clearance. And 
and Donald Trump just waving him in because he likes wife beaters. He likes he likes people who beat women. He really respects men who beat and abuse women. He likes that. He, that's his life. That's what he does. And he gets off on it. And he gets off on being powerful enough to sort of bless them and forgive them. And even today, even as we even are having today, this podcast, he is, he is making excuses and saying mm-hmm. that he's a good guy. And he, she, well, he denied it. you know. And I yep. just seriously, in my fantasy land um, of – it's controversial. You know, He said, she said, sitting on a talk show with a nameless host. Let's just not <laughs> even give names. And I just keep punching him in the face and you keep denying it. Yeah, you punch just, him in the face and, and, and no, you and, deny it. And then I say, Drew Smith denied hitting you in the face. Who's to say? So who's to who's say? To, and both as, sides have an argument here. I can't really make up my mind. And I just do it again and again and again until Chuck Todd's teeth fall. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I say Chuck Todd? I meant to yeah. say a fictional. He uh, denied hitting you, Chuck Todd, in the face. It. He denied it. I know, he, I know him personally. <laughs> he's a good guy. He's a good guy. He wouldn't. Drew Smith's a good guy. I, I can't say whether he hit you in the face or not. Who can say? Really? Really? Who can say? That's the place we're at. And until not that level of violence, because I do not believe in that level of violence. I, I, I have a violent rhetoric sometimes, and sometimes my words run a little ahead of me, but I'm a peaceful person. But until that level of, of professional discomfort mm-hmm. is visited on people like Chuck Todd, we're never going to have an actual rational ground conversation about what's broken in this country. Never going to happen. Now, I, I take some comfort in that because we're just – we're reaching the point where we just are sidestepping. We're, yeah. we, you know what? I used to do the Sunday shows every Sunday. I don't. I really don't anymore. I do them sometimes, but it's such a fucking wasteland. It's such a fucking joke. And every time Chuck Todd opens his mouth to say both sides, he is gang piled yes. by dozens of people, just like are rolling their eyes, going, "Fuck, man, we see what you're doing." So yeah. the the only remaining question is, why does Phil Griffin want this to happen on his network? What you know what? Be- what? Because advertising revenue, yeah, well, let's face it. And that's as long as you can fill the slot with between advertisements with something, anything. Uh, and, last Saturday, there was a Republican consultant on uh, whose name is blocked out of my mind, but I did write a post about her at Crooks and Liars. Mm-hmm. And she literally said, well, look, you've got Papadopoulos, you've got Flynn, you don't have Trump yet, and then you've got the DNC with the same kind of issues. Golly, isn't that crazy? And Richard Lee, who is the host at that hour on a Saturday afternoon before the Super Bowl, uh-huh. says, okay, one minute yes or no answer. And she just changes the subject yeah. and asks this, this quick question. Why? Why did he do that? Was it to get more information from her? Mm-hmm. No, it was to fill the segment. Right. Because he has 45 seconds left. He has to fill before the commercial comes on. Now, repeat that lie twenty five uh, for 25 years, a yep. billion times, by people yep. in suits who goddamn well know it's not true. Repeat it often enough, and what do you get? You get my crazy Uncle Liberty responding yep. to every debunked thing both I ever sides. put out there with, well, you know, the Congressional Black Caucus is pretty bad, too. I think both sides are pretty bad. It's the automatic go-to defense. It's the automatic go-to. And, and the reason it exists and the reason it stays upright is because Chuck Todd and the scumbags like him who are who are occupying our uh, airwaves, mm-hmm. who, are, who, can, who are sitting in the way, who are blocking our democracy or preventing our democracy from healing, want it that way. They mm-hmm. keep feeding poison to these assholes because that's how they get the people to buy their reverse mortgages and dick pills. Yep. Um, Last, not not quite last. Apparently, uh, Donald Trump still wants to talk to Bob Mueller. <laughs> Apparently, this is sort of a, a sign of his pathology, uh, grandiosity. Uh, he he believes he's completely innocent, uh, and uh, and he believes his experience in New York as a real estate scumbag, lying under oath and paying huge fines, uh, makes him. Get, he's now he's more than a match for Bob Mueller. Let me in the ring, man. I'm smart. I'm clever. I'll just mumble a lot and look at the floor and lie, and I'll get away with it because I'm Superman. And I really, really, really want that to happen. <laughs> I really yeah. wanted to bypass his lawyers and and step in the ring uh, with Muhammad Ali at the peak of his career and just watch this son of a bitch go down in four seconds in the first round because um, it will it, it will be it will be ugly. Ugly, ugly. Now, his lawyers won't ever let that happen. I can't believe his people would ever let that happen. But the idea that he really thinks that he's he's up for this match is hilarious. And finally, in the good news department, right across the river from us, 
The Democrats flipped a Missouri State House representative seat, the district that went for Trump in 2016. Yep. So. Yep. And and by the way, the uh, it was Eric Bollard who pointed out today that uh, the generic House ballot uh, is plus 36 for Democrats among women. And that was before the wife beating stuff. Yeah. Before the wife beating and the defending the wife beating. And defending and hiding the wife beater and then deciding to say, you know, he was a good guy and I'm going to miss him. And then pairing the quotes from Kelly about yeah. – Black women, a certain black woman being, you know, a, a, an empty barrel. Empty barrel. Lying about a black woman yeah. who was trying yeah. very hard to get something done for her constituents. Uh, yeah. Just dismissing her out of hand and never apologizing for it. And, of course, standing up for his wife-beating friend. Um, this is who these yeah. people are. This is not the bug. This is the feature. This is who Republicans vote for because Republicans love people like this because Republicans are people like this. Drift class, uh, the mainstream media yes. is not paying any attention to how much of a reckoning there's going to be oh, from women who are uh, very motivated by this kind of behavior to do something about it. Mm-hmm. Uh this is and and we've talked about this before, you know. Where is the proxy war? Is the proxy war that women are now fighting back against Trump? Yeah. No, the proxy war is them defending wife beaters right. and hiding wife beaters in the White House, and and pretending that that's that's okay. You know, we're not just not going to say nothing because he's a good guy well, and, and, and but, look, he's a Rhodes Scholar and and emails and but those emails, yeah, blue gal. but those, but those emails, emails, you know. Well, and and now let's get into this of talking about the budget and talking about the utter Republican hypocrisy on spending. Oh yeah. When uh, well, when there was a black Democrat in the White House, it was austerity central. Right, day one. And cut, cut, we cut. we can't spend because the deficit. We've got we're terribly concerned about the debt. And now uh, we're drunks in a whorehouse. Right. We just will empty our pockets, and we're yeah. going to have tax cuts for billionaires. To the tune of a trillion and a half dollars, and uh, and now a spending bill that gives a ten percent increase to the Pentagon, and uh, yes, Democrat. The fact that we have to t- say children's health insurance is a Democratic issue, yes, is appalling. Appalling. Right. It wasn't that way. No. It was even even when Hillary Clinton was first lady, it wasn't that way, folks. Children's health insurance was something that Republicans didn't dare say wasn't a good idea. Making well, sure kids had their shots was a great idea. Well, We're going to be now, bipartisan about that. Now the world in Republican land is reduced to what can I fuck, what can I steal, yeah. and who can I hold hostage to let me right. get away with it. That's and it. why should That's I it. have to pay for someone else? Right. Yep. That's who they are. That's who they are. That is literally yeah. – this is all they are. There's nothing more there. There's no secret – good Republican Party hiding in the wings. There's no Whig revolution waiting around the corner, Mr. David Brooks. That's never going to happen. That's, a, that's mm-hmm. again, that's your imagination. You were hired to put on this puppet show of a reasonable Republicans as a cover for the scumbags mm-hmm. who really are the Republican Party. And now you're about basically out there in the parking lot doing your puppet show for no audience. Because yeah. <laughs> yeah. the, the, the mob is finally saying, oh, we don't need the clowns anymore. We can just yeah. embrace our inner Klansmen. We can just enjoy putting up child molesters and Nazis and wife beaters because fuck you. We run everything. Yeah, we right. won. And, and as long as they're white men and old yeah. and Republican and on our team, they're good enough. Well, yep. And we noted – this is moving on to the theme area – that one of the things that really bugged you this week and bugs me, bugged me this week was that the Republican Party never apologized with, for how it treated Barack Obama. For Ever. eight years, never apologized, never whispered, never a word of it, never like, Jesus, we're really sorry. You know, the whole Bertha yep. thing, that was really kind of out of line. And mm-hmm. death panels, mm-hmm. yeah, we kind of made that shit up. That that never, because never apologizing is what Republicans do. Well, because they don't remember what they did last week. I mean, this is the, the memory hole mm-hmm. is is also the problem. I, I don't know which came first, but... Uh, if you don't remember what you did yesterday or what you said yesterday, of course, you're not going to apologize no. for anything you did. And uh, Barack Obama, how can they apologize to Barack Obama if Barack Obama, there was a text where Barack Obama wanted to know everything the FBI was doing. Right. And there's a text that proves that. Look, proof, proof, proof. 
And then you look at the date of the text, and it has nothing to do with the email investigation at all. No. It has to do with the Russians. Yeah, I'm about to. The Russians to... invading our election system. I'm about to go toe-to-toe with the Russians. I need to know everything that's everything. happened. Everything, yes. And... Because this is an act of war. And, and even, I'm the president of the United States. I should be interested in that. But even the repentant Republicans, even the apostates, even the ones who say, you know, I, yeah, I yeah, have never, right. ever Jennifer turned around Rubin, and said what we did to Barack yeah. Obama to advance to, in order to make sure that the, the, are the, the scum of our party uh, elected us to office in order to seize control of the government so we could steal Supreme Court seats and, and elect a racist madman we trashed the shit out of a out of a decent honorable african american man for 8 years we kicked the shit out of him and we liked every goddamn minute of and it we blocked and everything maybe, he did yeah. maybe we should be sorry about and and the effect of that was you know david brooks you know wringing his hands this week over how the, no legislation was passed in the past 15 years oh there was obamacare maybe tax cuts but you know well why do you think that was it was be- it was it because there was no lack of a need for that no. Wait a minute. Nancy Pelosi passed over 200 pieces of legislation no, in, two, no. in two years. Yes, she did. I know she did. 2008 to 2010, she passed over 200 pieces of legislation. The, the only thing David through Brooks that could House remember, representative. The only thing David yeah. Brooks could remember was Dodd Frank, Obamacare, and tax cuts. That's it. There was no nothing else for the past 15 years, which is a very odd number until you realize, oh, he just wants it to be both sides. It's it, it's both sides. It's you know it's not me. I'm not, I'm David Brooks. I'm above reproach, and I can never be fired. But somehow, for some reason, for the past 15 years, uh, only these three things have managed to squeak through, and then none of them were bipartisan. And can not I, can mention... I bring up something else too, dear class, that goes along with that same kind of memory yeah, erasure? Absolutely. Uh, the last debate between Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump, where Hillary Clinton expressed concern about the debt and concern about the deficit. Right. And said, I want to make it clear that every single program I am proposing that we take on and try these, we're going to try this new program where we hire people with autism. We're going to try this program where we have home health care for seniors. We're going to try these programs. She said, every single program that I have proposed, I have a pay for as part of the program. I have where the money is going to come from. Mm -hmm. And so I want to be clear uh, my, none of my proposals for programs that she had, you know, binders full of ideas, uh-huh. will add to the deficit. Well, you know, they're I think... all there. They're all. She wasn't saying that the deficit wouldn't grow, but she said, I, "I'm not going to add to this. Is not some democratic spend crazy spending program. Right. I pay for everything I'm proposing." And Chuck Todd said she's overprepared. Yeah, you know, this is the problem with this debate, blue gal. Uh, Hillary Clinton came. She was overprepared. So we're prepared. So we're prepared. That's yep. what Chuck Todd yep. had to say. And when yep. when yep. Donald Trump's campaign manager came out, when it turned out he was a ra- fucking racist. Yeah. And Hillary Clinton pointed out that the guy who's running this guy's campaign is a racist. Chuck Todd just threw up his hands and said, both sides doing this race thing. Yeah. Again, the, he's 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 a piece of shit. Uh, no <laughs> one knows why Chuck Todd has it. He sucks at everything. He's bad at interviewing. He, he's good at analysis. He's good at pointing at a board and, and reciting numbers, but he sucks at everything else. So, again, it's one of those great big mysteries that we're never going to figure out. Not generally why does this buffoon have this job, because it's pretty clear why he does. But specifically, who's who? why this guy in this seat? Couldn't they find a better carnival marker for the carnival? Is it is it does he? Who's I just he? I just want to take a moment and mourn the fact that Hillary Clinton isn't president. I know. Me too. Me too. All right. Because because everything can turn into a rant against Chuck Todd. I know, I know, and I, I tell you what. All right, um, we're gonna move on. I'm sorry, folks. I know. I this is how um, I get angry and my wife gets sad. <laughs> yep. And we have an agreement that only one of us gets sad at a time. Yep. So, or loses or it. Or loses it. <laughs> and my wife isn't losing it right now. My wife is genuinely no. because she's a better person than I will ever be. Uh, is is genuinely mourning the fact that um, this country all the people that she wanted to help yes have to wait, including dreamers yeah including well our, my stepson your son yeah um, yeah he, she wanted to help people like that and she really really wanted to and she really had a plan to do it and there were lots yep. and lots of people she really sincerely has fo- was focused on helping. And yep. all we heard about was what a bitch she was, and 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 her what her husband did, 
and her emails and yep. the, the people who should have been protecting this country. And, and from people on our side who should know better mm -hmm. saying things like Biden would have won. Right. Um, and not taking into account at all the first woman nominated and what she was up against mm -hmm. because of that. And the number of people who were white, female and male, white Midwesterners like us, who felt that they could take a mulligan <laughs> uh -huh. in the voting booth right. and not vote for the bitch because, right. you know, somebody else will elect her right. and it won't be my responsibility. Yeah. And that's vote the Stein. voter's fault. Right. I, I can vote for Jill or Stein. I can vote for Trump. I, I can, can vote, vote for Donald Trump. Trump. I can, yeah. I can, it's my way of, of, of wagging my Taking fingers. Taking it to the man. I'm, right. I can, I can not, I can vote against my own unhappiness. Right. And there'll be no with, consequences. With whatever. And there won't be any consequences for me. That's right. the point. There won't be any consequences for me. And you know who didn't do that? Black women didn't do no, that. No, they didn't. No, no. So, and, and there is going to be such a reckoning in this country. Well, and that's. And, and, and there should be a reckoning against. The Chuck Todds and the and all of the men in in media today who for whom there were no consequences if Trump was elected that just means better ratings right. doesn't matter doesn't matter to them at all and there's going to be a reckoning because they are not paying attention to how angry I am right this minute no and what I will do to to get it done to kick these assholes out of office and well, I and there are millions of me and and you went to a fundraiser last night. Yes, I did. did. We'll skip a little bit ahead, but yeah, no. Yeah. Uh, in our town last night, two events happened. I'm going to skip a little bit ahead and then come back to something. Um, okay. Last night, it was like the perfect pairing of events. Last oh. night, um, Janine Pirro was here. You know, crazy ass, <laughs> wandering the woods of Chappaqua. She was here where's, in Springfield. Where's yes, Hillary? She where, she's on her, where's Hillary tour? Because you heard Hillary might have been in Springfield at some point or another. Uh, she was here in Springfield. Uh, she drove 170,000 miles an hour to get here because <laughs> uh, she's a notorious speeder and we believe uh, a drunk, but we're not sure about that. So we wouldn't want to impute anything to her. We know that she's crazy, however. We know mm -hmm. that she's a, a genuine, unhinged, crazy person who has her own show on Fox News. Um, and she came to town because the Republicans here uh, need – Love her. Uh, love her. Yeah. And it was the 114th Lincoln dinner, I think, um, which is – Republican Lincoln dinner. Yeah, Republican Lincoln Pretending dinner. Lincoln would be a Republican today. Yeah, yes. Yeah. It was just insulting and, and mind-boggling on so many levels. But there were 100, 900 Republicans at the Bank of Springfield uh, Center, which is a big-ass convention center in, in downtown Springfield, to hear Janine Pirro and mm -hmm. Bruce Rauner. Yeah, uh, together there. again. And, and over the proceedings was the stink of Donald Trump because she kept praising Donald Trump. Bruce Rauner. And, endorsed him, and right? Raised about, money for him. Ranted about deep state conspiracies. Yeah. Uh, cooked That's up by thing. Hillary Clinton and James Comey and Robert Mueller, who should all be investigated and probably should be in prison because the prison. FBI is corrupt and is crazy and they've all conspired to blah, blah, blah. Um, and that's what that's what Republicans were doing last night. Democrats that's, were that's not what we were doing last no, night. No, we were at we were a little bar. We were a little yeah. bar with some friendly, happy people having beer and uh, we didn't have beer, but we had crackers and, and uh, grapes. With uh, our future congresswoman. That's right. It we was, did. It was just wonderful. I mean, Betsy no, Londrigan. Betsy Dirksen Londrigan. Uh, well, you know, you can leave, put her her middle name or her maiden name in there or not. She is a Dirksen. She is a Dirksen. But she's the uh, she's the right kind of rich person. Boy, oh boy, that family. I'll tell you, they will walk a parking lot with a plastic bucket raising money for a public school. They will. They will. They're just they're just exactly what you want. In... They are exactly what you want a dynasty, a yes. family dynasty to be yes. in terms of just, you know, we'll put some jeans on. We'll walk around this parking lot and we'll ask people to donate to this public school down the street. Right. Where we're trying to make sure the kids have crayons and piano music and uh, good light bulbs and we'll in there. And we'll show yeah. up on Saturday morning in those jeans to help pick up the, you know, clean the block. Right, um, right. And, oh, you need that done? Let me call my friend. Yep. Who's yep. probably a congressional aide or she's, you know, <laughs> the, the wife of Could one of, of our senator. Um, yeah. This is a, this is a yeah. wonderful group of people who are deeply committed to yep. doing good things. 
And yep. so we, you know, gave her a couple of bucks and went to her fundraiser and we're delighted to meet them. And just it was a wonderful time. Well, that's the other thing. The fundraiser wasn't ten thousand dollars a seat. No, it was twenty five bucks. Twenty five bucks. Come in. Which we will do once this year because right. that's, you know, I have medical bills to pay. So yeah. we will do. And this is for, you know, getting a Democrat to represent me in Congress Absolutely. is worth 25 bucks. Absolutely. Definitely. And we might do a uh, fundraiser for her oh, oh, through through the yeah. good offices of this podcast at of some point. Po- at some point. Uh-huh. We, might, we may decide to do that. But uh, one of the things she talked about was the vote to get rid of health insurance. Right. <laughs> In the house that led to the beer beer blast in the, in the Oval Office and the and the Rose Garden, where Donald Trump says, "Hey, I'm the president," you know, ha ha ha. They had to give him a win, huh? and she was in Washington when that happened. Mm-hmm. And she said, "I sat on the step. I was literally on a bench in front of the Capitol and looking at this beautiful building and all that it has represented over time." And I know this is a speech and a story that she's told, but I believe her. Yeah. And she said, if if God was trying to kick my ass to run for Congress, <laughs> yeah, that did it. Because her son was in a coma. Her right. son got Lyme disease and had a or had had an accident. Or dis- there was some health crisis where he was in a coma. And if it weren't for the protections of Obamacare, she'd be bankrupt. Right. As a Dirksen, she'd be bankrupt. And and here's the thing. The person she's running against was the chief whip for that exactly. vote. Rodney, exactly. Roddy Davis's only accomplishment in Rodney Congress. Roddy fucking Davis. His, Let's his, be clear with his, what we want to call who him. Who doesn't hold town hall meetings, who pre-selects and screens his virtual who town halls. blocked sc- me from commenting on his Facebook yeah. page. Well, and he, yes. he pre-selects um, questions. The that questions. He, that he'll take yes. online because he doesn't want to get in trouble. Who's right. a doofus? You know, yeah. and yeah. 20 years ago, he would have been harmless, but he is a member of an incredibly destructive machine. And that machine needs to be taken apart piece by piece. And he's one of those pieces. And he was the one of the chief whips of taking our kids health care away. Yeah. And celebrating and having yep. a beer and, and cheering that on. And I will never fucking forgive that. That nope. is never going to be in my book. OK, um, yep. you know, I don't I don't care how many decades pass between now and the day I die. That will never be okay, and I'm never giving that back. And I'm right. never giving them a pass. And I'm never saying, well, you know, maybe we should work together. Um, but I do have a test, Blue Gal, if you don't mind. No, go for, right ahead. For, you know, there are all these suddenly repentant Republicans. Yes, right. Um, who are suddenly discovering, again, that their, their party's full of Republicans. And yes. they all have media jobs, and they're all wringing their hands, and they all sound like bloggers from 2004. Today, believe it or not, Joe Scarborough was retweeting Charlie Pierce. Oh, my God. I was just – I was woozy. <laughs> <laughs> so like, what? Jo- you I, mean Joe Scarborough, the guy who blocked me? Yes. Yeah. The guy who used to talk about the Cheeto-smearing, underwear-wearing yeah. liberal bloggers. Yeah, uh, that guy. Uh, now writes like one. In his yeah. column of the Washington Post, which, of course, he shouldn't have because he's a scumbag. I've used that word a lot. I'll, I'll stop using it. But uh, the point being, there's all these suddenly repentant Republicans who are suddenly discovering what liberals have been telling them for the last 24 or five years is actually true. Mm-hmm. Part of their – pretty much their entire lifeboat protocol is never admit that I was part of this. Never admit yes. that this was this has a pedigree to it. Right. So I, I have a, and, and yet I get a lot of pushback from people who email me and my comment section. I still have a comment section and so forth saying, come on, man, we got to work with David Fromm. We got to work with Joe Scarborough. We might not like it. They're but on our side now. They're on right. our side. Right. You know, we can make a team. You know, even Churchill had nice things to say about Stalin. And my first thing is, hey, look, if if Joe Scarborough wants to commit 20 million troops to the fight. Great. Show me the fucking troops. Yes. If he wants to give us the plans for the Death Star, do it. Thus far, all I've heard him say is, I want to keep my job, keep my salary, keep my wife, keep my my privilege, keep the column I got, all of which I got by slandering the people I now want to work with. I want to give up nothing of my privilege, not a single fucking penny of of my wealth. And now I want to bitch about the guy my party elected because I made a party that was capable of electing an asshole like that. And because I I personally put him on the air on the phone. Dozens of times on my liberal television program, right. morning morning program, named after me. So I want to pay no price for any of that. I want to be forgiven right. for it. I want to be maybe applauded for, you know, my my uh, edginess, my honesty, my coming to the front, you know, so forth. And and 
and I get a lot of pushback from liberals who are nice people who are, I think, desperate for friends. I don't mean yeah. <laughs> I don't mean friends, friends. I mean, you know, it's been so long since anybody said we weren't crazy. And even these people yeah. are not saying yeah. that. They're not right. saying that at all. Right. They're saying, no, I get it. I get what you're saying. They're saying yeah. we yeah. have discovered this new thing that nobody knew about before, which is the Republican Party is crazy. And all these people who've been saying it for 20 years are like, it's water in the desert. Finally, someone on television is saying something I can agree with. Right. And so, you know, let's, yeah. let's work with those. I get it. I get it. And here, yep. But here's my test. And here's it's a simple test. Um, and I think it's fair. Uh, mm -hmm. Imagine a table and there's 12 chairs around it. And the, each chair represents a privileged position in the public square, a place mm -hmm. where you can reach millions of people. You and I can reach right. our, our eight, nine, 10,000 listeners. And we love every one of you. And it's great. But mm -hmm. we can't reach 100,000 or a million or 10 million. These people can. And right. they do it every day. So right. my basic threshold for getting one of those seats is that you will not lie to your audience, and that doesn't seem to be too much to ask. Mm -hmm. And the first thing you have to admit to get a seat at the table is that the Republican Party has been fucked in the head for 25 years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can't pretend this just started last fall or 2015 or whatever line in the sand. The, the minute you quit the party, suddenly the party went bad. No. Yeah. You have to admit that you were part of this. You owned this. Mm -hmm. you, were, you contributed to this. And if you can't, if you continue to lie about the past, that's how we got in this. That's how we got in this place. Mm -hmm. The entire mm -hmm. Republican Party, the minute George Bush was out of office, started lying about George Bush. I was never there. I never supported him. I'm a Tea Party member. Who are these liberals? Who are these Democrats? I care about deficits all of a sudden. Right. And, and right. the problem with, with letting Bill fucking Crystal into the perimeter is not that he's a clever tweeter, because he is. He's a clever tweeter. He's been doing it for a long time. The problem is the minute this Thing falls apart, you will find your pockets picked. You will find them regrouped and ready to run Jeb Bush or Marco Rubio, who will do exactly to take away your kids' health insurance and your pension. Absolutely, right, you right, be, right. Can't trust these fuckers. So what they have to admit is the Republican Party is a systemic, endemic, existential threat and has been for their entire adult life. Then, mm -hmm. if we're feeling really honest, explain to me how you missed that. Mm -hmm. Explain to me how mm -hmm. you didn't notice that, because really that is that was your one fucking job was to was to be yep. a, a a spokesman for the party. Tell us what's going on in the Republican Party, David Brooks. Where's it headed? What's the trajectory? What's the program? Why should we trust George Bush? That was your whole job, and you completely fucking blew it. You missed everything. And and there are a couple of Midwestern bloggers living in a cornfield who who saw it. So explain to us how you, highly paid professional Republican completely missed everything of importance that was going on in your party. And we weirdo liberals saw it and warned you all along. Then once you cross those two thresholds, welcome to the table, pal. Uh, there's just a couple more things we want to touch on. And then we're just a, more, a couple more things. Uh, uh, prayer breakfast. <laughs> Donald Trump said a prayer at a breakfast. He did. And uh, he invited Mark Burnett, who was the executive producer of the, uh, Apprentice, back in the glory days of The Apprentice, Donald Trump tweeted a welcome to the prayer breakfast to Mark Burnett on Twitter. Uh, I think that might have been a thank you for not releasing the N-word tapes yes. invitation. Yes, darn nice. Mighty wide of you, Mark. Mighty wide of you. And uh, also, um, there were three times the number of Russians that were there last year at the prayer breakfast. Russians love prayer, and they love pancakes. And where are you going to get prayers And they love those pancakes. pancakes. They... Yeah. Uh, and uh, what was the other thing we wanted to talk about, Drift Glass? Uh, footnotes. Footnotes, yes, because uh, as Stephen Colbert said, Devin Nunez should know something about footnotes because he's going to be a footnote in history. Mm -hmm. uh, Devin Nunez didn't notice the font size of the footnote that uh, basically erased his whole argument <laughs> Oops. in the memo Oops. that the FBI was hiding mm -hmm. Uh, that there was some bias in some of the uh, source material. And actually, in a footnote, it said, yeah, we know that some of these sources have some political connections, but we've also backed this up, and we know that the, the information they provided was accurate. Whoops. And um, so it wasn't what they said it was. And uh, Nunez said, yeah, well, yeah, that was in a footnote. So, you well, know. And one more thing. I'll just, yeah. I'll just let people, I'll let this hang there in the air. Last week mm -hmm. was the week that David Brooks weighed in on abortion. Abortion. Yeah. yeah. That was a week ago. <laughs> and, and, you know, you really don't have to say anything about no. that, Drift Class, because no. plenty of women, no. columnists, uh, tweeters, uh, people on television. Oh, God, yeah. Many, many people, yeah. many peoples yeah. told David Brooks. 
exactly uh, how much exactly sand. Exactly what uh, a 20 week abortion was about. Uh -huh. And then hit him over the head with. Yeah, it, it, the internet is still ringing from all the, the head banging. All the hitting over the head, um, yeah. Uh, and of course, David Brooks doesn't read any of that no. because it hurts his feelings. He doesn't, he doesn't care about any of that. It doesn't affect him at all. It doesn't bother him at all. And it was. It hurts his feelings it, to read criticism of his work. It hurts his well. fee So he, that's what he has an assistant for. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, it, yeah. it, you know, David Brooks waited on an abortion in, in what should have been a career ending move. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, and it won't exactly. affect him at all. And, and so the question as always, is how, how is that possible? How, what specific arrangement does he have with the people who write him checks that lets him do something this atrocious and, and ludicrous and dumb on the pages of their newspaper, and they're cool with it? Uh, that's a, a wonderful question. Again, if we had a, <laughs> a, a, a free press that was really interested in finding out, it, but as I said in, in a tweet this morning, the media cannot fix itself. It just yeah. can't. It, it, it's the, the, the pot cannot contain itself. The media cannot fix itself. There's no incentive for it to actually do the analysis necessary to figure out what the rot is at the center that lets a monster like Trump rise up in the middle of everybody. And no one does a goddamn thing about it, but the same old liberals who've been trying to stop this thing for 25 years. And, and Drift Class, pour out one for uh, little Luke Russert yeah. this week. Little Luke Russert has discovered that Republicans don't care at all about deficit reduction. And, you know, his substitute daddy, John Boehner, worked so hard. It made him so to, sad. To keep, the, to keep the true meaning mm -hmm. of cutting spending and austerity for austerity's sake, to keep the deficit down, to reduce the debt. And work so hard and tirelessly yeah. for a principle that it turns out the Republican Party didn't even believe in. I don't know if you know this little guy, but but John Boehner was born over a tavern, and he's very yeah. sad about everything. And yep. it turned out oh, it was all bullshit. Yep. It was all bullshit. They never cared. Oh, a minute. bullshit. And Luke Russert all bullshit. finally is getting hair in 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 places where you know growing boys often get hair, and his voice is changing, and he's <laughs> noticing that oh my god. <laughs> Everything. I he, well, he, here's his tweet. He said, it's pretty remarkable that everything I covered on the Hill from 2011 to 2016 regarding spending and budgets was completely meaningless. Leadership has totally gutted the Boehner spending reforms. Never get tricked again. Hashtag GOP only cares about deficits, debt, and spending when, D, when a D is POTUS. Wow. You know. And then, you know, 4,500 people <laughs> said what Casey Hewlett said to him. <laughs> Yeah. People on the left have been screaming for years that Republicans don't really care about deficits, with a mountain of evidence to back them up. It was only a ruse to block everything Obama tried to do. The real question is why people in the media didn't listen. That's a good question. Luke Russert replied to that and said, think because of the energy and intensity of the Tea Party and how hardcore they were regarding spending, that it was more real this time. But you're right. It was all a lie. A lie. <laughs> I and then to. Joe Rossi replies, yeah. I'm sorry to read this whole no, Twitter no, stream it's... here, but it's 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 pertinent. Yeah. I appreciate this, Luke, but know this. When a Democrat is president and GOP becomes spending debt scolds again, huh? many of your colleagues will report these sentiments as if they are genuine. I hope you'll hold these colleagues accountable. Man. And I said, no, they won't. Yeah. Well, and what Luke Russert replied again. He's replying to people. Sure. That, good for him for replying on Twitter. Right. I, I appreciate Luke Russert. Right. I appreciate that you're actually reading other people's tweets, pushing back on you, and you're actually replying. That is something to applaud. Yes. Okay? Yes. Flat out applaud. Yes. Thank you. He said, I'm out of journalism, but if I ever go back, rest assured, I'll never shut up about this. And that's when Blue Gal comes in. <laughs> yeah. Which is why they'll never let you that's back. Right. <laughs> let, you know, they will catapult, they will Melissa Harris parry your ass right out Are of that building right the minute you start out. talking this way. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and you Absolutely. will wonder, and as you hit the pavement, you will wonder, mm -hmm. I thought Phil Griffin was my friend. I thought yeah. Andy Lack yeah. liked me. The last thing I remember was Joe Scarborough welcoming you to the building. And then there was a hand over my mouth, and then I ended up in a park. I don't know what happened. Yeah. Well, golly. You know, we know what happened. Welcome, <laughs> we know what happened. Welcome to Liberalville, Luke. <laughs> wow, you're out in the outer. I said that. Welcome to the Burn the Lifeboats Caucus. It's way out in the desert where no uh, no microphones except those that you get donated to your podcast exist, right? Yeah, yeah. All right. Are you there? What do we do each week, Luke Gal? Each week we post to our Facebook page and website an internet kitty or other pet yeah. sent in by you, the listeners. 
And this week we have some internet dogs love, to share with you. We, love, we are we are we animal pet people. We're not. We are. So. We are. Uh, in this particular picture, we have Duke, Scotch, Milo, and Ruby. Wow. And I also want to say how much I appreciate multiple pets in multiple homes. These are the uh, canine cousins of some former internet kitties. Uh-huh. And the internet kitties, being internet kitties, Duke, Scotch, Milo, and Ruby got jealous. And so we're going to have Duke, Scotch, Milo, and Ruby on our Facebook page and website as Internet Canines of the Week. Uh, in this photo, they are watching MSNBC. <laughs> Because that's what they should do, right? <laughs> They're all sitting around doing what they should do watching. But you know what we love to do when we're watching MSNBC? We like to compete for who can do the best Richard Painter impersonation. Because the whole thing is just disgusting. This whole thing is just disgusting. <laughs> we have one listener that we call that son of a bitch uh-huh. whose wife uh, will leave him if he does one more minute of Richard Painter's voice leave, in leave her it to house. Us. Leave it to us, you <laughs> son of a bitch. Take that Richard Painter voice out of my house. My God, this is so ridiculous. I can't even believe it. <laughs> I love Richard Painter. I, I don't know if he's always been this uh, way. He worked for Bush, well, for God's well, sake. This is another here's one. The thing. Here's, right? here's a guy who passes my test for being on yes, TV. Yes, he does. He's a yes, Republican he who says, no, this is all fucked, and they were fucked before, and it's awful, and it's terrible, and we need to fix it, and I am here to help. I want to roll my sleeves up and help any way I can. Yep. Terrific, yep. man. Yep. Welcome to the fight. Yep. We're happy to have you. Yep. And there are people. Yep. Bruce Bartlett is in that category. He's much less. Yeah. There are people like that. This, this is not awesome. I actually think Jennifer Rubin is getting there. Yeah. When, she, when she said the only way you're going to fix this is to elect a Democratic yep. Congress, yep. she's getting there. I, she needs to apologize yep. for the years— <laughs> 2010 yeah. to 2014. Yeah. yeah. Uh, apology would be good. I would like some apologies, but you know. Apology accepted. You get you get what you get. Apology accepted, Captain Nito. Yeah. You can send. <laughs> That's not. You're really in a violent. I'm mood not violent. Class. I just love Star Wars so much. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Right. Gosh. I just. I want to say uh, to those of us who have survived various marriages where. Uh, we were not treated as we deserve to be treated. Uh, I'm with you, and I appreciate all of the people that have come forward this week, all of the women that have come forward, and men too, uh, in support of the the wives who were... Um, I don't want to be triggering. I'm trying not to be triggering yeah. here, but, you know, uh, wives who some, whose face somehow met a vase, you know. Oh, how'd that happen? Yeah. Uh, it, it's, um, Lawrence read several comments on his show and it's just been very moving and, uh, it's time to support one another and it's time to stop this crap from happening. Yes. And, uh, amen to that. Give, give everyone enough support that we believe you when you say that happened to you. We get it. Okay. Uh, you can send your internet kitty to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, or you can write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service Go Postal Union's letter on the air unless you say otherwise. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. This is not charity. This is our job. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution, and you can too. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details. We've got PayPal. We've got Patreon. We've got uh, GoFundMe. We've got everything got over box. there. in take... P.O. Box that you can just mail a check to. Oh. Um, we got a wonderful, actually, I'm going to put this picture up on our Facebook page, an $8 check and a little Post-it note that said, you guys are doing a great job and a smiley face. Mm-hmm. <laughs> It's like, that's all you got to do. Yeah. It's not complicated. You don't have to write a complicated uh, drift glassian letter no. to us about political philosophy. If you put, great job, guys, smiley face, and a check for $8 in an envelope and mail it to us, we are going to be so grateful yeah. to you. Yeah. And say, thank you, thank you, thank you. I took a picture of that because I thought that really indicates, I didn't give it, you know, I didn't photograph the whole check or anything like that, but just the picture of the note and so forth and just say, look, that was... A wonderful effort that somebody took the time to write us $8 check for our anniversary, send us a little note that says, happy face, you're doing a great job, made me feel good, supports our show, and you're done. 
or <laughs> you could write us a 20 page both sides single spaced uh <laughs> theory explaining treatment yeah <laughs> for our hbo yeah, program for, for our, right? our award well no we're, we're on crackle honey you know, oh, that's again, right. Crack. I know HBO. I, you know, I, I, I don't, I don't work with HBO. That thing that we have where it happened and we don't do that anymore. Um, you know, <laughs> they won't let Drake class on, let HBO on HBO no more. I'm just going to say there was a thing. <laughs> I mistook the, the throne for something else. <laughs> something bad happened. Many people were sad. Uh, it cost us a little money. Um, mm-hmm. And my name is on a wall somewhere at HBO headquarters. That's all I know. Yeah, right. Good luck with that. Okay. <laughs> Please share our show on Facebook or Twitter or any other social media that you have and and let us know do we need to get a Snapchat page yes. for the for the podcast or a, an Instagram page for the podcast. We need to know that kind of, we need that kind of advice in our lives, okay? Hey, Drift Class, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Well, Blue Gal, you know the Internet Kitties are actually getting their own show on the USA Network. And it's going to be called Talking Pro Left, and it's going to be a post-show commentary show in which they comment on our new show, Talking Crooked, post-show commentary show on Crackle. Crackle. Let's think about living. Think about living. Let's think about loving. Think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the popping and the loving, 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 loving. loving, loving, loving. Let's forget about the wine and the crying and the shooting and the dying and the fellow and the switchblade knife. Let's think about living. podcast is recorded under Creative Commons license, copyright 2018, DGBG Productions Incorporated.